Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm totally copying Brad this week and I'm using some whiteboards, but I think I win because I'm gonna use four whiteboards instead of one. So uh, we're gonna be talking about continuing our series on Romans. We're gonna be talking about Romans 13, but I think what will be beneficial to us is if we look back at Romans um, in terms of an outline of what has happened before. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna read these verses because you can do that, but I'm just gonna go through the points of the outline. And I think it will help us understand why um, Romans 13 exists and, and why God asks us to do the things he asks us to do. So for first point of the outline of Romans, the righteousness of God, Paul starts out talking about that. Then he talks about our lack um, of righteousness and our need for it. Uh, the third point is the gift of the righteousness of God, the fact that it's ours. Um, we needed it, we have it, because God gave it to us. Um, fourth point, the challenge to the righteousness of God. Um, Paul was kind of refuting what some people were saying about the righteousness of God, and he was kind of clearing some things up. The fifth point is the moral demands of the righteousness of God. So that means kind of, it's kind of application for those who have the righteousness of God now, um, what it means to live life um, in terms of the fact that we are saved and we are now righteous um, because God has given it to us. What, is our, what do our lives look like now that we are citizens of God's kingdom? So let's move on over here. Um, and we're going to just recap what Brad talked about last week. He talked about Romans 12, 1. Um, kind of uh, just a couple of highlights of um, the fact that and now that we are righteous, right, we are living sacrifices. We are not... Um, part of this world. We are no longer uh, conformed to the patterns of this world, but we are transformed. We are, we are part of a new kingdom. We are citizens of God's kingdom. And so we're transformed. We're now able to know God's will, test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And we're able to now walk in his will, which is so awesome. And there's kind of this parallel verse um, here that is going on in Romans 7, 12. And I think it, it kind of sheds light onto what God's will is, because I think that is a question we ask, oft, ask often, what is God's will for my life? And it is clear here um, that it is to follow the law. And this verse, Romans 7, 12, is very similar to this verse. It says, so then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. It even kind of sounds like it, right? Uh, God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Um, so I think we can parallel these verses and, and come to the conclusion that following God's law is his will for our lives. Um, and, and that is true because we are now pronounced righteous, because we are walking in his ways and, and we are not walking in ours anymore. We are free from sin and, and free from having to sin all the time. And we are free to walk in his Love and his law. Um, so which brings us to Romans 13. And I'm going to pray real quick before we read. But um, we're going to start Romans 13 verse 8. But let me pray really quickly. Um, God, I thank you so much for you. For what you've done in our lives, Lord. Um, what you are continuing to do. Um, God, just for your sacrifice. Uh, which, which allowed us to taste your righteousness. And to know it. And for it to be true about us, God. I thank you so much for that. Um, I pray that we can honor you with our lives, uh, that we can live as living sacrifices, God, knowing that um, the desire of our hearts, God, are, are for you and for your glory and your name to be proclaimed. Um, free us from selfishness as we, as we think about these things and how to honor you, God. Um, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So this, this Romans 13 falls into the moral demands of the righteousness of God piece of the outline. Um, and that is basically application for us. So how specifically should our lives look now that we know Jesus, um, now that he has changed our lives, what do they look like? Because they're going to look different and they're going to be new, right? We are new creatures in God. So um, Paul tells us in Romans 13 verses 8 through 10, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Um, so we talked earlier about how 
God's will for our lives is to fulfill the law. Um, and Deuteronomy talks about that too, kind of right around the time the commandments are given. Um, the Deuteronomy 1.18 says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. The law. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. So God's law is really important to him that we follow it. Um, and we see kind of his reason for these laws and his heart behind it. Um, and that is this. For whoever loves one another has fulfilled the law. Um, God's priority in giving his law is that we might love one another. By obeying these commands, we are respecting and loving our neighbor and we are doing no harm to them. And I think we can attest to this truth by uh, the fact that and the ways that we have been hurt by people not following these laws, by people sinning, by people being disobedient to these things, we have been hurt by it. Um, and I think that is a way that we know that this is true, that the law of the Lord is, is love to other people. Um, when people are, right, so Jesus kind of in the Sermon on the Mount talks about how you shall not murder and, and goes further to say that you shall not think um, ill of anyone, you shall not hate anyone in your minds. And I think a lot of us have been kind of hurt by people being hateful towards us and, and unkind and mean. Um, and that is a way that, that we know that this is true because people disobeying this command and people hating us in, in their minds has hurt us, right? It, it has not felt loving to us. So on the flip side, obeying these things is loving to our neighbor, and that's what he's saying to us. Um, and I think that it's neat because he wants, God wants us to do these things so that we can love and protect other people and that. That needs to be the thing that we're thinking about and focused on. But also, he gives us these laws so that other people might not hurt us. Um, he's thinking about us. He, he wants me um, to, you know, if I were married, he would want me to have someone that does not commit adultery um, in that relationship, right? He, he's looking out for us um, in asking us to love others. He's wanting us to be loved, too, by others. Um, so this just like, I feel like it changes how we see the law. Um, when, when we know the purpose behind it, that, that is, it is so that other people may be blessed. Um, and I hope that we can just get better at, at knowing that, um, like other people should be our priority. Cause I know how like quickly, even in myself, like selfishness and, and pride kind of take over. Um, but other people should be our priority and, I think it is also, it's for our joy that we obey these things. So there was this um, guy who was really depressed. And so one, so he like, his doctors were trying to figure out how to help him. Um, this wasn't recent, it was a while ago, but he, so they decided that they were gonna give him a cow. So they gave this man a cow um, and what happened? He, he had to take care of it. Um, he had to feed it and um, love it, right? And and do all these things to, to kind of maintain this cow. And so what happened was he got better. His depression got better um, because he was looking out for other people. So I think it is God has in mind that it is for our joy to do these things. So we, it will result in happiness for us when we kind of embrace these laws wholeheartedly and when we love others um, and when we, when we don't covet. How, how, how much would your life look different if you didn't covet, if you didn't want what other people had? I mean, if you were able through that to experience contentment in what God has given you, um, we can be so blessed by fulfilling these laws. So, so Paul wants us to know that, um, that this is why he's asking us to do these things, um, that the law should still be important to us, even though we are, we are free from the law in terms of like it being a weight on us, but we are now free to, to obey it and reap the benefits of obeying it. Um, so that we can bless others and, and be blessed by it. So I want us to keep that in our minds as we talk about the first part of Romans 13. And um, this part of Romans 13 is going to be talking about authority. Um, and I think it's God has some interesting things to say about this and some really good reminders. So I'm going to bring this a little closer. 
Um, so Romans 13, 1 through 7 says, Let everyone be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God instituted. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authority. So I want to talk about this passage really quickly. Um, and, and I think there's some, some things that jump out to me right away. So he's talking about governing authorities, people in places of authority. Um, and so I just see some repetition here. There's no authority except that which God has established. Um, the authorities that exist have been established by God. Again, he says the same thing. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God instituted, so what God has made so. Um, therefore, it is necessary to submit to authority. So God has established the authorities in our lives, um, whether it be government or otherwise. God is in charge of that. Um, therefore, we submit to them. We follow laws. We follow the rules. And, and like we were talking about earlier, um, when, we, when we submit to God, um, we are blessed by it, right? And we bless others. And I think that is also true for submitting to authorities, um, that we bless others and we are blessed by it when we do it, when we do it well. Um, so we pay taxes and we don't grumble when we do it. And that's maybe the harder part is the not grumbling part. Um, so that people can get paid for authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. And I think that has changed, as I've been thinking about this, that has changed how I think about taxes. Like it is for, for people that I'm paying taxes, for their salaries and, and things. Um, it changes how we think about it. So verse seven kind of goes into more detail of what it looks like to obey an authority that God has put in our lives. Um, it says, give to everyone what you owe them. Give to everyone what you owe them. If taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, pay revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. And I think as this list goes on, these things get harder and harder. So taxes, um, revenue, respect is it's harder to respect people, especially when we disagree with them. It's harder to honor people um, that we have a hard time with. And I think in, in our kind of crazy political uh, climate that's going on right now. These things are even harder to respect and, and honor people in authority because most of the world is not doing that. Um, they like to complain. And I think like, you know, God, God has our lives look so different than the rest of the world, um, which is often why persecution happens. But like how different would it look if, if you are standing here, if you who have jobs, you're standing around with, and your coworkers are all like roasting your boss. What if you didn't do that? What if you respected them and honored them? Um, it would look different. And God is asking us to do that because God is our authority, right? Jesus is our savior, yes, but God is also our Lord in our life. So we do, um, so we obey him. And I think we like never know what will happen through an act of obedience. Um, and I think this is true for the things that we talked about, for loving others, like, right, we are so affected when people sin. It affects us, it hurts us. Um, we never know how other people are gonna be blessed by obeying the law. We never know who that's gonna touch and who that's gonna help. And I think we see this example in, in Jesus obeying God. Um, he, you know, he was in the garden, he said, Father, may this cup pass for me, but if not, your will be done. Um, Jesus obey, obeyed God um, to the point of dying on the cross for our good, um, right? So he may do no harm to his neighbor so that we might know God. Um, it was like the most loving thing he could do and, and we were so blessed by, by Jesus submitting to God uh, as his authority. And I think that we can, we can learn from him when we submit to the authorities God has placed in our lives. Um, and it looks different and we can be blessed by it. So I just wanna challenge you guys to do that. Uh, the authorities in your lives, whether it be your parents, your teachers, submit to them. Um, have their back, like do more than submit to them. Have their back this week and see, see kind of what a blessing it is. Um, and if this is hard, bring it to God. Like he wants to help you um, and be there for you in that. So that's really all I have for today. Um, let me pray for you guys and um, yeah, let me pray. 
God, I thank you so much for you, um, for who you are, and just for these rules that you've given us that might be hard, God. Um, but I pray that, but I pray that we can do them knowing that um, God, you are our authority, and you you ask us to do these things. And God, I pray that you give us humble spirits to come before you, knowing that um, everything you do and everything you say is good, including these things, God, including these hard things too. You are just so good to us, Father. Um, yeah, I thank you for your righteousness that we got that we didn't deserve, Lord. Um, I thank you for Paul who wrote us this this letter and um, for the ways that you challenge us through it, Lord. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.